My name is Risho Kechu and welcome to this series of Mindset Gabanga Educator videos on Grade 5 Mathematics. In this episode, we look at algorithms and non-standard method learners can use for doing division calculations. In classrooms across the world, the operations of multiplication and division are usually taught making use of traditional methodologies. In essence, there isn't anything wrong with these kinds of methods and they can be used efficiently and accurately in the absence of a calculator. However, the problem arises when learners get answers wrong, even though the procedures have been drilled and practiced over and over. It's true that not knowing one's tables is a possible reason for wrong answers, but as a maths educator, it is important to ensure that your learners understand algorithms before they are learned by rote. There are other methods that learners can use to perform the operations which might promote greater fluency and give the learners conceptual understanding. The traditional algorithms or standard methods for long division are quite complicated to memorize if the procedures are not understood. The aim of this episode is to offer the educator other approaches to multiplication and division which are less prone to error and may prove to be easier to use rather than an approach that may make no sense to learners. These approaches may generate a new understanding and appreciation of the mathematical ideas connected to the multiplication and division. Today in studio with me is Elizabeth Ladik. Welcome. Thank Welcome. you. Welcome. Her experience includes primary school teaching, high school teaching, and many years in a teacher training institution with a focus on the intermediate and senior phase. What made you focus your attention on different methodologies for teachers' division algorithm? Division is a difficult algorithm, and the children find it extremely difficult because there are so many seemingly to the learners unrelated steps that they have to memorize and they make a number of errors and that was an area of concern to me for example 508 divided by 27 the answer is 2 so the zero is ignored oh which traditional algorithm seems the most problematic it definitely is division because they, the learners just have to rely on their memory. There is no other way for them to understand that unless one uses alternative methods. And what do you think is advantage in trying to apply the more uncommon methods? The learners can actually see what is happening. For example, if we take the example 822, and we break that up and make it 800 plus 20 plus 2 and then the learners begin to realize that they're dividing into the 800 then into the 20 and at the end into the 2 carrying over remainders of course. Liz, does the new curriculum and assessment standards support the use of alternative methods? I mean the, more, the methods that, are, that make more sense to them? Yes, the learners are allowed to use their own methods. Mm -hmm. There is still mathematical thinking involved and the mathematics in the alternative methods used correctly is sound. And in your experience, what has been the response from the learners on the new methods? A learner who's traditionally taught and simply taught the algorithm and is able to do it first responds negatively. They don't want to try. But once they begin to experiment with the new methods, they then realize that they have understood the algorithm for the first time. And those learners who struggle with the algorithms very often understand alternative methods far better. Liz, what mathematical concept lies at the root of this understanding? 
The learners have to have a thorough understanding of place value mm -hmm. and of expanded notation. For example, if we take the number 872 divided by 27, they would break up the 872 into 800, in other words, understanding that the 8 was 800, 70 plus 70, understanding that the 7 is actually 70 plus 2. So you have a combination there of the understanding of place value and expanded notation. Yeah, amazing, amazing. Where were you when I was doing maths in school? Thank you very much for joining me here in the studio. Thank you. It's been great. Let's look at other methods of long division that can be used in the classroom and remember the key points to look out for in the classroom study. Notice how the learners use their understanding of place value as the starting point for multiplication and division. Before the operation is introduced, the teacher checks to see whether learners even know what happens to numbers when we multiply or divide. The use of colors can play an important role when place value is introduced. This can further serve to retain the learner's focus. When the traditional algorithms are introduced at the end of the operation, note how mathematical links are made with conceptual understanding. I have 345 bits inside here. Now I want to share these bits into these 26 boxes. Now what can I do? Do I have to minus? Do I have to add? Do I have to multiply or do I have to divide? So what do I have to do, Jayshree? You have to divide. I have to divide. So how am I going to divide them, Mandy? Three, three, 345. 345 divided by 26. That's correct, Mandy. It's 345 divided by 26. So it means we have to do long division. And I hope you still remember last year you did long division. Am I right? Yes. Now, if we are doing this sum using the long division method, the standard way, it will look like this. So in this method, when we are doing long division, we will say 26 goes into 3 how many times, and it can go. So we say 26 goes into 34 how many times, and it goes one time. And then we say 1 times 26, and we get 26. Then we subtract 34 minus 26, and we have 8 left, and we bring down the 5. And then we say 26 goes into 85, three times and three times 26 is 78 and then we subtract and we have the remainder of seven and this tells us that there's 13 remainder seven now this method most of the learners don't understand it because it doesn't make sense to them and it is too complicated and some of them they also forget the steps that you need to follow in order to do the sum. So today I'm going to show you simpler ways of doing long division using place value and expanded notation. So we will write 345 divided by 26. Now this tells us that we have to subtract 26 from the 345 as many times as possible. So the easiest way of doing this is when we multiply the divisor, and the divisor is the number that is after the division sign. So our divisor is 26. Let's make our divisor bigger, so we're going to multiply it by 10. So we will say 26 times 10. And what is 26 times 10? 260. 260. Now let's take this 260 and minus it from 345. So we say 345 minus 260. And remember, how did we get this 260? It is the 10 groups of the divisor because we multiplied it by 10. So it's 10 groups of 
26. 345 minus 260 will be 85. So now we are left with 85. Now from the 85, let's take away as many 26 as possible. How many 26 can we take away from 85? So the easiest way we can take out 126 at the time and see how many. So it's 15 minus 6, which is? Nine, 9 and 7 minus 2 which is 5. 5. Let's take away another 26. 9 minus 6 is 3. three. 5 minus 2 is three. 3. And let's take away another 26. 13 minus 6 is 7 and 2 minus 2 is 0. zero. So how many 26 can, did we take away from 85? So there's three groups of of 26 and then we have the remainder of seven so we will ignore the remainder let's add the groups together so it's going to be 10 plus 3 equals to 13 so this tells us that 26 goes into 345 13 times and there's a remainder of seven so don't you think this method is easier than this one Yes. How many bits are we going to put in each box? Kaendran? 13. We're going to put 13 bits and we're going to ignore the remainder. Now I'm going to show you another way that uses both the expanded notation and the place value. Three hundred and forty-five here. We've written it in expanded notation. So this is three hundred plus the forty plus the five, and the five represent the units, and the forty represent the ten, and the three hundred represents the hundreds. Now we're going to say. 26 goes into 300 how many times? But we won't know that answer. So you remember before we multiplied the 26 by 10, and what did we get? 260. So we already know that there's 10 groups of 26 by 260. So we're writing 10 there. And from 300, we're going to subtract 260. And what do we have left? 40. Now, the 40 is the tens, so we will move it to the tens column. So we take this 40, and we're going to add it to the other 40 that is there. And what is 40 plus 40? 80. 80. So now we have 80. We will say 26 goes into 80. How many times? Three, three times. times. And three times 26 will be 70. 78. And let's subtract 78 from 80. What do we have left? Two. two. Now the two is a unit. So we're going to take it and move it to the units column. And we add it to the unit that was already there. What is five plus two? Seven. seven. So our seven here is going to be the remainder. And we add the ten and the three and we get 13. 13. Remainder, seven. seven. I have a problem for you that I need you to solve. You can use any of these two methods to solve it, any of these two methods that you learned today, but you're not going to use this one. So I'm taking this chart off. Now, I have to put 268 bits into 14 boxes. Each box must have the same number of bits. How many bits in each box? So you can start solving this problem now, and if you don't finish it, you'll complete it at home.
Learners should be free to use non-standard methods if they make more sense to them. I hope this episode inspires you to provide your learners with different methods to use for division and multiplication. Encourage your learners to see all possibilities and even use their own strategies and procedures for working out answers. If this happens, let them tell the rest of the class how they approach the problem. Remember, if a method is understood by the learner and it works for all multiplication and division context, then they will remember it instead of grappling with a procedure that they find confusing and do not understand. Well, that is all we have for you today. Thank you for joining me in studio. Until next time, goodbye.